Hi everybody, uh, you're now sitting in on uh, Digital Filmmaking uh, 301, this is um, Cinematography 2, and I am your host, Professor Michael Walsh, and I will be your instructor for the next four weeks. Uh, I wanted to take this time to welcome everybody to the course, and just give a broad sort of overview of what's going to happen this month. Uh, I realize that it's only, uh, what, day uh, day three for most of you folks, so uh, there's not much that we can delve into tonight in terms of uh, technical discussion, uh, given that you've only had a, a day or two to look over the material, but I can give you a, a sort of a cook's tour of what's going on and uh, introduce myself and let you know uh, what... Uh, we'll be discussing and uh, some of the concepts we'll be tackling in this month. So let me scoot over to the LMS here and show you what we got going on. Let me push this control panel out of the way. Okay. So uh, we've got our getting started activities. That's where you can uh, watch video uh, and read my bio if you choose to do so. Um, it's probably uh, probably a good idea. Um, we have uh, some inspirational uh, video for you to check out. I think this is a pretty fun video to watch. Um, your syllabus is here. Uh, syllabus and course at a glance. And that's important because it's going to give you the breakdown of the month, what we're going to be looking into. It also gives you some important information uh, regarding my office hours and how to contact me if you have any questions, any issues. Um, if you need to discuss coursework uh, or uh, anything, quite frankly, relative to cinematography or lighting. Um, you've got your Safari Books uh, Hollywood Shot Designer section. You've probably been looking at the Safari Books already in most of your classes, but this might be new to you, Hollywood Shot Designer. Shouldn't be. Should have been using it since Lighting 1 and 2, but if not... Let's get acquainted with it now because your diagrams that you submit for your projects will need to be done uh, with Hollywood Shot Designer or with any other uh, drawing or CAD application that you're comfortable with. For instance, um, uh, you could use uh, AutoCAD. You could also use um, uh, Google SketchUp uh, or any number of uh, technical drawing programs. It's up to you, but Hollywood Shot Designer is here. The links to the site are here. The application is uh, free for you to use. Uh, and you can purchase uh, a professional advanced subscriptions if you want uh, certain of the advanced capabilities of the program and if you want storage capability. So take a look at it. It's worth uh, checking out. Uh, how to get support. Um, this is changing a little bit. Um, but you can still get your uh, student guidance uh, phone numbers, your IT phone numbers here. Uh, and there's some basic procedures there for you in the event that you have problems with your software subscriptions, for instance, or um, uh, manufacturer's defects in your tech package. Um, also, let me know if you have camera or lighting equipment issues uh, that involve um, manufacturing uh issues. Uh, I can get you in touch with um, your lighting uh, vendor directly for resolution of those situations. Uh, Sony might be a little bit different, but let me know when you have camera issues so we can discuss how we're going to handle your assignments. Supplementary videos on YouTube. Uh, this is a good place uh, for you to check out uh, extended FaceTime videos on concepts covered in class not just this class, but any of the classes that I teach, because this is my YouTube channel. And if you go to it <clears throat> on YouTube, there's a link in the uh, section, by the way, uh, you'll see my image, and you'll see uh, we have at this moment, uh, gosh, I don't know, about 93 or 94 videos here. Uh, so um, here's a video on your... Hollywood camera work, or your shot designer. Here's uh, an interesting video on a depth of field simulator. Um, here's a virtual lighting tutorial with uh, Zivork, which is pretty cool. 
Um, and little tidbits from each of my classes, little FaceTime videos, um, chats, or uh, lectures, either equipment or concept lectures. Um, and you can check it all out. Um, here's a nice five-part series we did this year on filters of all kinds, going all the way up to the professional cut glass. Um, so th consider this like a little asset library that you can go to and, and read up on some of these concepts if you're interested or if you need extra extra help uh, understanding something. So you can see there's even stuff in here from uh, <laughs> digital image making uh, when I was teaching those kids uh, last year. So uh, it's all fun stuff. Um, so use this uh, at your leisure. It's there for you to utilize uh, at any time. So uh, I will, uh, like I said, I've provided the link uh, here in your um, summary. So if you go to it and uh, check it out, let's see if we have a, uh, whoops, got to sign in. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> lost a little momentum there, but that's okay. Um, let's go to December. That's you guys. You get a rare look at all my classes. <laughs> so here we are. Here you are down here. Let's access your section. Whoops. So this is me, folks. I'm with you the whole way. Lighting 1, 2, Cinematography 1, Cinematography 2. So we're all very busy. Uh, so here we go. Let's take a look here. Make sure that link is uh, still there for you. So if you check this out, just click on this right here. That'll get you to the spot. There's also some interesting videos that I put in that I thought you might enjoy. Uh, you don't have to watch these for any points or a grade, um, but I thought you might like to see them. Uh, Lighting for Tone, this is uh, a concept video that I did that ex uh, tries to uh, explain to you the focus of the course, which is on four conventions of photography, uh, rhythm, pace, tone, and collaboration. So these, uh, these videos you might find interesting. Um, check them out. Uh, they're not very long few minutes a piece, but um, they're nice. I mean, this is uh, the Sigma Aizu plant in Japan, and it's um, it's an interesting video about how they're making their lenses in their current lens line. You may have heard about the Sigma Art lenses. Uh, if you haven't, check it out. Um, it's very interesting to see uh, how some of these tools that we rely on are manufactured. So, week one, live session register. Some of you have already figured that out. Um, there's also a view video uh, portion. Uh, once I get the, the data on this file uh, compressed uh, into uh, YouTube format, I'll be loading it up on the internet and I'll provide a link where you can come back to this section and you can watch tonight's go-to session uh, at your leisure. Uh, every week we have a community discussion board and that's for you folks. You determine the topics. Uh, it can be uh, discussions about things going on in class. It can be discussions about things that you're involved in outside of class, like special projects or group projects or films that you're working on that you want to share with the group. Uh, take advantage of it. It's a great way to network. Um, each week you'll also have your uh, read and view section. Uh, you're probably fairly used to this format by now, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't open it up and check out what's inside because uh, Rhythm and lens work is going to be some very specific reading assignments and videos that I need you to watch in order to be successful in week one. And while I'm on opening and reading content from week one, I'd like to stress that you guys do all of your getting started activities in week one, please, not in week four. Uh, I want you to know how to get support, how to operate your shot designer. I want you to know uh, by the syllabus what's expected of you each week so you have your assignments done on time. Um, and, you know, it's good to know about uh, assets at your disposal, but just go ahead and check these off in week one um, so that you've seen them, and you can get it out of the way. It'll take you about five minutes to do everything, I believe, and uh, I think that uh, it'll help you in the long run. It also um, is a strong indicator to me 
that folks are interested in the class and they're dedicated to the concepts in the class and dedicated their own success by being proactive about getting their work done. Okay. Um, moving on here, we have a uh, couple of new things that you won't that you won't have seen in other classes. Uh, I have a section every every week on Meet the Cinematographers where I'm going to introduce you to two folks that are working in the industry. Uh, they will typically be highly notable cinematographers, and uh, I'll show you their reel. I'll show you their website, a little blurb about them and biography, and then uh, you can check them out and, and, and look at them. Um, we also have, uh, complementary to that exercise, a research paper we do every month, and this is called the cinematographer spotlight and this is a research paper of a three to four pages um, where you will be asked to uh, download a cinematography uh, membership roster from the American Society of Cinematographers and pick any one of uh, on this list I think there's something like 50 uh, active cinematographers listed and uh, pick one, you know, it's uh, darts at a map or it's the guy that you recognize from your favorite movie or TV show, but he'll be on this cinematographer directory right here. And you're going to pick one of these names and then you're going to, and then you're going to do a little research. You can use uh, IMDB, that's the Internet Movie Database. You can use uh, YouTube and look for lectures or uh, uh, demonstration clips. You can also use the ASC website, that would be theasc.com uh, and that is the official website for the Society of uh, American Society of Cinematographers. Um, you can also use magazines and magazine articles. Uh, the ASC puts out uh, the American Cinematographer magazine. That is their trade magazine for that guild. So if you're already reading American Cinematographer, you're probably already aware of the ASC. Uh, many of the people on the Cinematographer directory uh, have uh, current films that are in uh, recent issues of the American Cinematographer, and that's a good place to gather information on these folks. Um, but basically, the discussion rubric, the uh, spotlight instructions are here with a series of suggested um, questions to answer in your paper uh, or um, particular, um, uh, particular concepts directions that you might want to go in in terms of your paper. And, of course, the directory itself, where you can check out uh, who all the folks are that you are uh, going to choose from. So, having said that, let's get back to your activities page here. Uh, of course, every week uh, we'll have a quiz that will cover the concepts from class. Um, that should be expected in each of your courses, but uh, especially here, it is open book. So you can uh, use your notes and use your textbook. The questions are pulled from the readings and from the lecture demonstrations. Uh, open book knowledge check. Uh, the first week we are discussing lenses and lens work. Um, you do have a project at the end of each week. Uh, this week is the language of the lens. And it's an exercise that you'll perform with your camera. Um, involving different focal lengths, different f-stops, depth of field, and lens compression. So there's four conventions um, that I discuss in cinematography um, in this class, and that is lens work, um, camera movement, uh, collaborations with other departments, um, and I, I break them down into uh, rhythm, pace, tone, and collaboration. Okay, so if you have... Um, uh, in, 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 in terms of week one, we have rhythm through lens work, okay? So it's uh, your shot design, your sequence design, your lens choices, and how they contribute to an edit that becomes part of the rhythm of your film. Uh, in week uh, two, we will uh, talk about lighting for tone. So we're going to take what you learned in lighting one and two, and we're just going to delve, keep delving deeper into the concept of lighting and how it produces nonverbal cues that help support a storyline, themes in the story, the tone of a scene, or the tone of an entire film. Um, and we're going to talk about that more deeply here. And in week three, we're going to discuss uh, pacing through camera movement. So the pacing of your film or the pacing of your story. 
uh, as supported by the subjective camera, which is uh, moving with purpose and not moving for the sake of moving the camera. And then in week four, we talk about collaborations the cinematographer has with other departments, namely uh, the art department and the uh, production designer uh, who's responsible for the entire artistic uh, look of a film uh, under the auspices of set design, construction, uh, hair, makeup, wardrobe, um, and so forth. So we have the cinematographer who's controlling the image from the photographic side, and we have the production designer who is uh, helping to build the themes and tones of the film through artistic touches. And the two of them, when they collaborate, is a very powerful combination. So week four, we're going to take a look at that relationship. Um, and that will be the course. That will be uh, the end of the session for you folks. And it will be uh, our last collaboration in terms of coursework uh, until you graduate, um, with the possible exception of your capstone project and our mentorship program. I am a uh, participant in the mentorship program, so we may have uh, interactions um, beyond this course uh, with regard to your final film project, and that would be by your choosing. Um, so at the end of the course, we have a student course evaluation. You have this in every class, and I want to really emphasize to you folks that um, this is not trolling for compliments. This is me asking for your honest opinions about uh, your experience with this class. Um, it helps us build a better curriculum for you and for the folks that are coming up behind you. Let us know uh, what you like about the course or what you don't like about the course. Let us know if you found difficulty with any of the concepts or any of the procedures that you were asked to perform. Uh, give us some feedback that we can use to improve the program and improve the experience of everybody who goes to LA Film School. And this is a, one of the uh, rare opportunities for you to um, uh, take part in um, the uh, quality of the program, uh, for you to participate um, in helping us create uh, and reshape the program uh, as we go along to make it better each time for the next group of students. So consider this your way of contributing um, by doing the student course evaluation. And while we're down here towards the bottom of the week's uh, responsibility, the month's responsibilities, I'm sorry, uh, I have a few things for you to be aware of. First, you have lighting, equipment, support, and accessories. Okay, This is where you're going to find out information on the vendor for your lighting kit, how to get in touch with them, their website. Um, and I would check it out because they have a lot of products outside of the realm of your fluorescent softbox kit that you might find particularly um, attractive uh, products or intriguing products that you might want to try, um, including LED technology and panel technology, which is um, not new to the market, but taking certainly taking the film market by storm from the filmmaker's point of view because uh, they improve the speed and efficiency of your production. Uh, they have a smaller lighting footprint and more capability uh, per fixture than you do with the fluorescent uh, single color uh, soft boxes. We have bicolor LEDs uh, in various shapes and sizes and power outputs that you can check out, as well as additional stands and periphery equipment like batteries and so forth that you may need uh, in the future. Um, but also you have a point of contact for the folks who manufactured the gear that you're using right now. And if you have questions or problems, you can always reach out to them uh, in terms of purchasing new bulbs or getting parts for your equipment or helping you with um, repairs uh, on something that might, be, that might get broken through regular use. And that's, uh, that's fairly routine. So it's good to have a relationship with your vendors so you know who to go to when you need help. Uh, or when you uh, have a problem you're trying to solve. So Favatech uh, is here. Their website is here. And uh, check them out. They're a good company. I like them. They're, it's run by good people. And uh, they're here to help. So take advantage of that. 
And we also have your, at the end of the uh, program here, we have your student late policy and your student media content policy. Please look those over. The student late work policy has evolved over time at LA Film School. And you should know the most recent version of the student late work policy, which does indicate that uh, any coursework that is uh, from week one uh, or week two will have perishable expiration dates. In other words, if you don't do your assignments for week one and you wait till week three and you try to submit, you will find that you will be closed out of that course. Or, or I'm sorry, closed out of that assignment. Week one assignments close at the end of week two. That's well beyond the three-day late period where we deduct for late points. Um, the week two assignments will close at the end of week three. So, folks, you got to get your uh, projects, homework, and discussion posts done in the week that they're due or within three days after they're due. Otherwise, you'll start uh, accruing serious late points and eventually be prevented from submitting if you're more than 10 days late or eight days late, I'm sorry. Uh, week three uh, assignments uh, will be closed at the end of week four. And then, of course, week four will give you three additional days beyond the end of the course to submit any late work uh, for your final grade. But uh, do check that out. Be aware of it. And... Uh, Keep it in mind each time you are deciding when and where to complete your assignments because it will play a part uh, in your success. Student media content policy, check it out. It's all about the use of firearms, drugs, and alcohol as uh, content in your student assignments. Now, I personally don't have an issue with the use of alcohol, tobacco, or firearms in the productions of your films if they are in justifiable context and in good taste. Uh, we're not interested in anything risque or exploitive in any way and we certainly don't want to uh, encourage uh, or endorse uh, the use of alcohol, alcohol, tobacco, and firearms by our students and therefore we have to take a stand for the sake of the college and its integrity and for the sake of the brand to ask you please uh, don't engage in content for submission that will be controversial in this way. Uh, it will not be accepted. Um, there will be extenuating circumstances for folks who contact me ahead of time and involve me in the nature of the content that you want to shoot uh, with a brief uh, outline of what you intend to do, how you intend to handle safety procedures, and how you intend to uh, how you intend to handle the use uh, or the um, uh, the creation of controversial content, and if it's deemed acceptable and academically justifiable, we'll allow you to do so with a waiver. But if you don't go through that process and you submit something questionable, it will be kicked back for a zero. So please, please. Get in touch with me sooner than later when you have issues like that uh, that you need to have resolved. Because if you don't, um, the night that something is due or three days after the due date is not the time to contact me and ask for special consideration. At that point, it's pretty much uh, understood that uh, it will be treated uh, as uh, late and or unacceptable based on the subject matter and... Uh, that will be uh, a decision that will be irreversible. So please don't put yourself in that situation. Don't put me in that situation. Let's all communicate. It is a communication medium. Let's be aware of what, what's going on and let's collaborate. Let me be your partner in this. I won't drag you kicking and screaming through your own college experience. You're responsible for your due dates. You're responsible for your readings. You're responsible for getting your assignments done. And I will help you in every way that I can for you to succeed, but you've got to meet me halfway. So please read up on these things so that you're aware. And um, let's have a great uh, let's have a great month. This is a I think it's a fun class. It's an advanced class. It is a lot of work, but the work leads to a payoff. Uh, if you're a cinematographer on a film set, you're not uh, you're not a grip. You're not a craft service person. You're not uh, 
somebody who is just there uh, enjoying the experience and soaking a paycheck. You're in charge of a lot of uh, assets, a lot of budget money, a lot of crew members, and you're in charge of a schedule. And it's a position of high responsibility and high creativity for individuals who are uh, capable of working under those constraints of uh, high skill and pressure mixed with a little bit of politics and a little bit of uh, uh, a little bit of fast-paced uh, creative environment. So uh, let's see uh, let's see how you do. Cinematography too. It's fun. Uh, I enjoy it. I hope you do too. I look forward to sharing it all with you. I look forward to working with each of you this month. Uh, and if you have any questions or issues, as usual, give me a call. Check me out on the syllabus and in the welcome section. Uh, find out how to reach me, and let's talk. Uh, and let's have a good month, okay? All right, folks, that's all I've got for you this week. So have a good week. Have a good weekend. And uh, I'll talk to you soon. Thank you.